What's happening? Will Freeman, RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com, coming at you with part two of how to transmute your sexual energy. If you haven't watched part one, definitely check it out. The idea is being able to take your base level course, low vibration sexual energy, transmuting that into higher levels of happiness, mood, energy, success in business, success in the gym, everything, you name it. Not only do I think it's important, I think it's essential if you want to have the highest quality of life because ejaculation is the most draining thing for you, for your mood, for your energy, for everything. Again, check out part one, which we covered the problem with ejaculation, the transmutation solution, what you'll notice, the levels of ejaculation, as well as the article over at revolutionarylifestyledesign.com because this is a long, intensive post and that will give you all the information you need for you to be able to save for your reference and putting it into practice. So now in part two, what I'm gonna give you is porn and how to deal with that, energy work, sex, and my experience. So in part one, we covered levels of ejaculation, but there are many other things to, con to consider when you are working on getting to those higher levels of not ejaculation from indiscriminate ejaculation to awareness that ejaculation drains your energy to ejaculating once a week to ejaculating twice a week all the way up to you know fully transmuting that energy and uh, going no PMO and putting it into your business. So the first thing to consider is porn. Okay, um, when it comes to sexual transmutation, ejaculation is the is the major factor. Okay, but porn also has a big impact on your energy levels, focus and your mood. The best research on the detrimental effects of porn is the site called uh, yourbrainonporn.com. Incredible resource, ton of good information on there. The major problem with porn is that it downregulates your dopamine receptors. So for some guys who struggle with porn addiction, this leads to them not being able to get sexually excited enough when they have a real woman in front of them. You know, they can't get hard. And for other guys, they can still get hard, but sex with a real woman isn't as thrilling as having eight tabs open of, you know, HD streaming into your face porn. And of course, the more porn you watch, the more different kinds of porn you need to reach that dopamine thrill. Um, again, we talked about having the ejaculation addiction, but there's also the the porn addiction, which is a which is a real thing. So here's the deal. The, the ideal amount of porn to watch is none, okay? With that said, we live in an age of temptation. So again, it's all about levels. Just like there's levels of ejaculation, there's levels with porn. And despite the fact that your brain on porn and you know there's all these communities but no FAP and no PMO are really talking about the, the problem and some guys really do have a massive, massive addiction with it, there are all, also some guys who you know, watch it infrequently and it's not a huge problem. So it's not quite a black or white issue, but if you can quit entirely, that's the ideal. If you can't, what I would suggest is matching your porn consumption to your ejaculation frequency. So we have the levels of ejaculation where it's ejaculating once a week, twice a week, once a month, um, once every couple months. So at that point, you're going to match that to, okay, I can't quit porn, but I can save it till where I'm only going to watch it on Sundays when, when I decide to ejaculate, okay? Matching it like, you know, okay, I'm getting my ejaculation down to once or twice a week, and I'm going to allow myself porn to watch as a reward for a hard week's work, all right? Lastly, though, if you are going to watch porn, when you ejaculate, I strongly recommend that you stick to softcore porn, like where the girls just, you know, the beautiful girls just getting naked, or softcore lesbian porn, or POV porn, where you're, it's the point of view, and you're the guy who's in shape having sex with the girl, okay? Basically, it's, you, if you're gonna watch it, it's like, okay, there's a nice girl in front of me who's inviting me to have sex with her, or I am the guy having sex, as opposed to you watching another guy have sex with a girl, because then you're in the observer position, all right? And let alone all the other crazy stuff that you can watch, and now you're just the observer position. So like you're, 
you know, when you're watching two people have sex, you're like the guy in the corner watching it, all right? And this is not the ideal position to be in. Um, I don't like that type of porn if I'm going to watch. I, I want to be the guy whose point of view, I'm in the action, right? That, that it, you know, it's a, it's a virtual reality type thing. Not the guy jerking off in the corner while two other people are having sex in front of me, okay? Very important to, to, to maintain that, that frame because what happens is, first of all, for your, for your pride and mentality, you know, you want to be the man in there, not watching the other guy, right? Not, not, you know, not watching the other guy have sex. The other thing is when it's you as the observer, you're disconnecting yourself from the sex act. So at least if you're watching a girl sort of inviting herself towards you or you're watching the POV thing, you can still kind of connect yourself to that act. But with that said, again, the ideal is, is, um, no pornography, but if you are going to watch limited to your ejaculation or limited to the tantric masturbation where you're able to have multiple orgasms, multiple dry orgasms, recirculate that energy, which you can see how to do and which I do um, in my article and video on how to have male multiple orgasms. Again, the link is going to be in the article at revolutionarylifestyle.com and kind of leads into my next point, which is energy work. Okay, so outside of just pure willpower, you also have the option to learn how to what's called injaculate and have a dry orgasm, which allows you to have um, orgasm without ejaculate, which allows you to maintain your energy and allows you to have multiple orgasms. And then at the higher level, you're able to recirculate that energy into your tailbone and then up your spine, as well as into your kidneys and as well as into your heart center and can have some extremely powerful male multiple orgasms. And I know this because I can actually do this. This is not some hippie mystical crazy stuff. I can actually do this and I've explained the technique in, in the article of the same name as well as in my book, How to Fuck Women Properly. And it's very important to understand that ejaculation and orgasm are two different things. If you don't believe me, you can check out Mantak Chia's book, The Multi-Orgasmic Male, which is where I, I learned and, mo and eventually modified this, this, this tactic. The only thing is I can't do it with a girl. So because when I'm, you have to push yourself to the point of no return and then, and then you know, slow your breathing down and, and get very comfortable to be able to do it because at, it's right at the point of ejaculation. So if you tip over the edge, you ejaculate and then it's all over. So if some hot Brazilian girl is riding on top of you and you're trying to have a multiple orgasm and she just moves her hips a little bit too fast, it's game over. And then also if you're, if it's with a girlfriend or something and you're not using condoms well, that multi-orgasmic test might end up with not only you ejaculating, but you becoming a father. So that's something to, to take note of. I can't do it with a girl, but I can do it by myself. And I, I go through periods of doing no PMO to periods of um, just doing this tactic by myself. Sometimes I do watch, I, I, I will watch porn with it. But again, um, it all depends where I am on those, on, on those levels and how good my discipline is and how much I'm transmuting that energy. But what I don't do is I don't ejaculate frequently. Even if I'm doing the tantric masturbation stuff, you know, I might ejaculate once every two weeks if I make a mistake, but I try and I try and not um, I try not to do it at all. So with that said, in comparison, I have again, I told you I went eight months with pure no PMO. I spoke about this in part one, where I didn't do the tantric masturbation at all, no porn at all. And I was just having slow bonding Caretta style sex with my um, the girl I was seeing at the time. Again, you can see how to do that in my video, how to have tantric Caretta sex. And that is the ideal. That is way more powerful and, and, and better than the dry multiple male orgasm. That, that, that you can have by yourself. The pure no fap, pure no PMO is the higher level for sure, okay? I still do tantric masturbation as, as one of my rewards, um, but no PMO is ideal. If I had a girl right now who was into tantric and Caretta stuff who I really cared about, then I could probably get back on um, being able to do no PMO for a long period of time. But I can't do it when I don't have, it, it's, it's just too difficult for me to do when I don't have a girl that I care about uh, because 
the buildup of sexual energy without touching my dick becomes too strong. I need a girl that I care about to be able to have really slow sex and be able to recirculate that energy during the sex act, okay? Also, one last thing to remember about um, energy work and porn is that if you are already no FAP and no PMO, I would advise you not to try my tantric masturbation technique because it, it will be very easy for you to slip back into your old porn habits and your old masturbation habits. And it's also, you know, it really takes about six months if you follow it to the letter to get to the point where you're consistently having dry orgasms and, and being able to recirculate that energy. So I would, if you are no fab, no PMO, stick to that. Uh, but I do recommend having, finding a girl to have, um, bonding style Caretza sex. It will be the best sex of your life. You just have to go really, really slow so that you're not tempted to ejaculate. But once you get past the first 15 minutes, uh, you're usually going to be good. And you're usually going to be able to go a long time. But again, check out my video on that. Next up, which is similar to the point is, is we're going to talk about sex. Okay. So as you might've figured out, reducing your eliminated ejaculation is going to change the way you have sex. It's not that having lots of casual sex with girls is morally wrong. Okay. I still stand by my products and my articles. If that's what you want, um, I have, I have that available to you. You know, you can check out my book, how to get laid on Tinder. I think every guy, I think it's not the worst thing for every guy to be able to go through a period of, of being able to have that abundance if it's possible for him with his sexual market value. But, uh, we are talking about levels of consciousness here and I'm, I'm telling you not to say that I'm better, um, if that's what you're doing, but I'm saying that it's a higher level of consciousness and on a higher happy level, being able to transmute that energy. It, it is, it really is. And if you haven't experienced that firsthand, you know, you might be thinking what I'm saying is, is kind of bullshit. And, and I might have too, but for sure. If I'm 23 or 24, I'd be like, you know, dude, shut up. Just, just show me how to get laid. Show me how to get more girls, you know? But I'm telling you from someone who has been through that, who's experienced it, it can become emptying very quite quickly. After a year or two, it's very easy to get bored of it. Transmuting that energy is, is a whole different level. And... Again, in the sex act, I can't have multiple dry orgasms with a girl, but I can go really slow and create insanely happy bliss states with a girl that I care about. And I can't have the multiple orgasms, but I can mentally direct that energy up into my kidneys and up into my heart chakra, which is um, in between your breastbone here in the middle of your chest. Again, when, when people are talking about chakras, it sounds like hippie stuff, but really they're just energy centers in your body, okay? So you've got one in the tailbone, you've got one in the prostate, you've got one in the, what the Taoists call the Dan Tian, which is your pelvic floor right above your penis, and that's the major one for sex is the prostate and the Dan Tian. And you've got one in the solar plexus, you've got one in the chest, you've got one in the throat, you've got one here in between the forehead, and you've got here at the top of that, right? Apparently, if you're able to transmute the energy above the top of your head, you're enlightened, so... You know, if you become a Buddha, um, make sure to pay it back and help a brother out with some of that uh, Dharma. But uh, the ones that I can feel consistently are the prostate, which is, you feel that in, in, in um, as a major energy center, the Dantian, uh, the solar plexus, where you feel the adrenaline and sort of that sexual hunger you feel the sexual hunger in the throat but the heart center is where you feel the heart and the kidneys is where you feel the love and up the spine is where you feel that uh the creating that goosebump sort of sensation like like you know that that lightning bolt um so there's various different ones and you're gonna have to play with it and and what you want to do when you're having sex is just close your eyes and picture where you're feeling it and then picture if you're able to just okay i'm feeling this in my dan tian can we move that up into the heart center can I focus on loving my girl? And when I focus on loving my girl, that, that energy is also gonna naturally move up into the heart center, okay? It's gonna, you're gonna feel it mostly in the heart center and the kidneys, and when it's releasing in the kidneys, it's gonna release in like these waves of pleasure that are gonna go from, from your kidneys, and it's gonna go up the two meridians outside of the spine in your back, and it's gonna feel like sort of this wave of like light, not ticklish, but... Um, uh, high vibration, high frequency energy, kind of like, and you know, make your eyes roll back in your head a little bit. And again, I can't do the 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 
orgasm, the multiple orgasms with a girl, but I can move that type of energy around. And dude, when you're doing that for two hours of slow bonding sex with a girl that you love, man, it's going to be the best sex of your life. It's also going to be the, it'll be the highest point of your year in terms of um, being able to generate bliss dates. Again, check out my article and video, how to create uh, tantric style bliss dates on that. And uh, the longer you've gone without ejaculating, the more powerful that experience is going to be. Okay. And this is coming from a guy who's had every type of kinky sex with a girl there is. Um, you know, I was, I was, we did, I did swinging. I did, uh, um, we'd go to like fetish parties with public sex. I mean, you name it. And, uh, those experiences don't even come close to slow bonding sex with the girl that you love. I don't even have interest in that all stuff anymore. Really? Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I have slipped up more than a few times in the last couple of years and had sloppy, drunk, casual sex where I ejaculated. Most of the time that was a, a bad drunk alcohol infused late night decision. It's not something I seek out during the day, but, um, uh, I compare it to drunken late night McDonald's, right? It's the same thing. It's it's fast, it's, it's sort of junk food, junk food and junk food sex. And you're drunk, you crave it, it feels good at the time, and the second it's over, you're like, oh, why did I do that? Right, the second you come, now you have a girl that you don't really care about in your bed, you feel exhausted, you just wanna to go to sleep. Same thing with McDonald's, you, you power that down, you're drunk, you eat it, you're like, oh, I feel gross. You know that the next day you're gonna wake up it's going to make your hangover worse. That's sort of how I, I equate it. I Don't get me wrong. I still slip up, but it, it is quite infrequent. And it becomes, the more the more time goes on, the more infrequent those mistakes become because I just don't, I, I, I don't want it anymore. It's not like I've had to force myself away from it. I just don't want it. And it will really be some type of altered consciousness like, alcohol that that will make me seek it out um just knowing that i don't want to ejaculate changes your perspective on sex because i can tell you outside of those occasional moments chasing down a girl that i don't have strong feelings for to have condom sex and for it not to be great because i you know i don't have strong feelings for her and it's the first time and I'm wearing a condom, so it feels like I'm having sex with a garbage bag in between her. And knowing that I can't ejaculate and that I'm not going to be able to generate any type of strong bliss states, it really takes the fun out of casual sex. It, it really does. Uh, because before that casual sex, for me, when I look back, it was just about chasing that ejaculation. When that's taken off the table, I'm like, I'm not really interested in that. Because I know that... Um, I'm not going to be able to get any of those good benefits and I can't come and it, it's just not worth it. Unfortunately though, finding a girl that you care about doesn't happen, happen overnight. And also you might find a girl that, that perhaps you have feelings for, but she might not be good for you. She might not be a loving, loyal person. So then you're going to have to screen her out as well. When you've maxed out your sexual market value, getting laid can be relatively easy, but finding a girl that you care about means going on a lot of dates, putting in the time, um, and playing the numbers game. So depending on, on where you are in your transmutation process and how busy you are in your business and whether you're doing a celibacy reboot and how your situation is with girls, you're going to have to adjust your uh, program accordingly, okay? So here are your options. Here are the levels from the least ideal to the most ideal. And these levels sort of parallel the, the levels that I gave you in part one of the ejaculation levels that, that you should be looking for, okay? So level one, starting from, from the lowest, is tantric masturbation and sex and ejaculation twice per week. Level two is tantric masturbation and sex plus ejaculation once per week. Level three is no PMO except for sex and ejaculation twice per week. Again, guys, I'm ranking no PMO higher than tantric masturbation. Level four, no PMO except for sex and ejaculation uh, once per week. Um, level five is, is tantric masturbation and uh, celibacy. Number six is tantric masturbation and Caretza sex with a high quality MLTR. And number seven is no PMO and tantric 
Caretta style sex with a high quality girlfriend who loves you and you love her. That's, that's the ideal. No PMO, loving girlfriend, transmuting all your sexual energy into your business and into um, creating loving, really happy sex with, with your high quality girlfriend that you love. That's the ideal. One thing to note though, if you're worried about ejaculating with a new girl, okay, so let's say you're doing no PMO or you're, you're practicing tantric masturbation and you're working on not ejaculating um, or, or you're just trying to ejaculate less frequently, it, it can be difficult with a new girl if you're new to, the, if you're new to this because you're so excited. So what you can do if, you, if you're finding a new girl is, is just sort of explain to her that you're trying to feel sex on a deeper level, a more bonding level, and that you're, you want to go slow. Okay. You can even say that, you know, I like to wait a few dates or, you know, instead of trying to get her home on the first or second date, you can wait till the fourth or fifth date if you're, if that's what you're looking for. Now your typical party girl might not be interested in that. You know, if you meet her at a club, she might want to, she's drunk, she might want to come over and have sex and she's probably going to want to have, you know, your rougher, more adventurous sex. But Believe me, many girls will be more than happy to find a guy who, who wants to go slower. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, again, check out my article and video on Tantra Caretza Sex, but you also want to check out a site called reuniting.info. It's the ultimate resource on higher consciousness sex. Um, it's especially important to check this out if you have a girlfriend or wife because it may save your relationship. To me, the, the first thing... The first nail in the coffin of any relationship is when you start to get bored of having sex with her and she starts to get bored of having sex with you. And this inevitably happens with everybody unless you learn sexual transmutation because of what I explained in part one called the Coolidge effect. You know, the more ejaculations you have with one per person, the more your biology says, okay, well, that's enough to get her pregnant. Let me go on to the next girl. But when you're not ejaculating and you're transmuting that energy, you create those blissful states and it it will either help or stop the two of you from getting sexually bored with each other. And if you don't believe me, check that site out. There's tons of um, feedback from couples who've said that this has saved their relationship. If I do choose to get monogamous again in the future, it will be an absolute must that this girl is committed to slow bonding sex the same way that I am. Because I know that in every other relationship I had where I wasn't doing that, I would, you know, you're going to get bored of the sex. Within two to three months, you know, six months at the most, if not sooner. So very, very important. With that said, okay, again, when we're talking about pure no PMO, no PMO and no sex will be a lonely period. And it, 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 it might be more difficult than you can handle. I can't handle no PMO and no sex. When I'm doing no PMO, I have to be having that bonding sex to recirculate that energy that's why the key is to have a good girl, ideally a girlfriend, and it works for a number of reasons because when you quit porn and orgasms, your bonding with her will go up. If I don't have a girl that I care about, which is right now, I will, I will go back to my um, tantric masturbation, which I try and do in my own head, and I try and do, I try and um, not fantasize while I'm doing it. I try and, and, and just do the technique and just feel the sensations whenever I feel an excess of energy. Um, but the pure no PMO and pure no sex can be difficult. If you can do it, uh, don't let me stop you. It, it is, you know, that, that is a good thing, but th that's just something to keep in mind. Lastly, I'm going to give you my experience. Okay. So my experience with ejaculation control started at 20 when I first read Mantak Chia's classic book, The Multi-Orgasmic Male. I didn't get serious until my late twenties when I mastered dry orgasms and, as I, I, I explained my come to Jesus moment about it in part one, where I just realized I was just getting so tired from ejaculating. I was like, man, okay, I've got to take this seriously. Started mastering the dry orgasms. And then at that point, I, I, I sort of handled it, but I was still chasing girls a bit too much. By my early 30s, though, I not only mastered the dry orgasms, but I I'd mastered the energy recirculation. Okay, 
in my method, I'm able, to, I'm, I'm able to give you the path to do it in six months, but it took me a lot longer because I was still testing everything out. But by my early 30s, I mastered not just the dry orgasms, but able to bring that energy up into my spine as well as into my heart center, kidneys, and, and all the other places. Um, I'd still make mistakes and ejaculate, but I developed a lot better control. And I also started to get into deeper tantric style and caretza style sex and have the best sex of my life, the most amazing mind-blowing sex, deep bonding sex, and that pretty much destroyed um, me chasing, uh, you know, lower quality sex outside of uh, some moments of weakness. Um, in my final years of sales, I needed a ton of energy. As I said in part one, not only was I selling full-time at a demanding corporate job, but I was working all night on RLD until I fell asleep, literally working every free moment that I wasn't at the gym for like a year. In order to do that, I needed an incredible amount of energy and I made it uh, eight months, no PMO, while still having bonding sex about three times a week. Without a doubt, the most focused, positive, high energy period that I've had in the last 15 years. And not to mention that the best sex of my life. When I didn't have a girl that I cared about, I'd occasionally slip back into bad patterns, but I made the best of it. And I actually wrote How to Get Laid on Tinder during one of my um, month-long binges, which was not from doing a super draw cycle. Someone who isn't me was doing a super draw cycle, which massively increased his DHT, which make his sex drive through the roof. Someone who isn't me does not recommend super draw for a number of reasons, which um, I covered in my video on pro hormones, but that, that how to get laid on Tinder was written from a month of someone who isn't me doing super draw as well as, uh, basically binging on casual sex. So that was a relapse. That was in the last, I think that was four years ago, the only other major relapse I had was when I came to Thailand two and a half, maybe three years ago. My first month here, I just I just let myself go wild. And I think I had sex with 10 or 12 girls, um, which is, is a pretty big relapse. Uh, but plus I was drinking every night. I was I just came over here. I was like, man, I'm, my dream, it's finally here. I'm going out every night. I'm, you know, I just let myself run wild. But by the end of that month, I could barely get out of bed because I'd just been drinking and just been going nuts. And I would, I would, I was sleeping until like 11 and I'd be hitting snooze a hundred times, you know, staggering out of bed, just, just a mess. And uh, that, that was my last big one. I think I was 32 and I was like, I can't, I can no longer do this, you know, not even close. So now at this point, it's just no longer appealing. Um, I don't have to really restrain myself that much because I know that sloppy drunk condom sex with a girl that I want out of my bed the second I come does not make me happy. Um, as I said, it happens from time to time, just like I occasionally have drunk at McDonald's from time to time, but I don't, I don't go on those binges. Um, and then the next day I wake up drunk sluggish and, uh, you know, I'll be like, this is a mistake and just get back on the horse and, and go back to non-ejaculating. Um, it might be a question of I might, I might quit alcohol again too because a lot of my bad decisions can't seem to happen on that. So that would probably be the end of it completely if I did, but I'm still enjoying training a couple times a week. My mind has truly moved beyond the low consciousness sex though. Um, I struggle more with junk food than I do with junk sex. When I find a girl I care about, I can have amazing sex. When I don't, I just settle for slow to mid-speed, semi-bonding sex with um, a girl that I like but not love. And basically, I'm working on a major project for, whenever I'm working on a major project for a month or so, and I don't have anyone special, I usually go celibate and alternate between uh, tantric masturbation and no PMO reboot, which is what I've done every time I wrote a book. Uh, I would just sit there for like um, two months, work 12 hours a day just grinding at the book. Ironically, when I wrote my book, How to Fuck Women Properly, I was celibate for that entire period so that I could get the book focused and get it done. Again, guys, I'm talking about transmutation. Whenever I wanna do major transmutation and I need, I need to invoke higher energy levels and transmute that into my business, I will go 
um, either no PMO, celibacy, or you know, go really hard on on a reboot and, and just minimum tantric masturbation. Over the next five years, I'd like to get a point where I'm either no PMO or having deep um, alternating between no PMO and celibate or having deep bonding sex with a girl that I really care about. But we'll see how that goes. It's just one of my projects that I'm working on and I'm just letting this, you know, just letting it play out organically. Um, I'm not a fan of celibacy for too long. Okay, you know, a lot of MGTOW guys like to, some guys are on that. No PMO and celibacy, um, really for no more than like a month and a half because it's not just about, sex is not just about um, ejaculation. There's also the affection needs, right? And there's also the bonding needs. And really, I, I just do that for like a reboot. But the ideal for me is being in love, no PMO, um, deep bonding, Kretza, tantric style sex. Uh, I can't do multiple orgasms during sex, multiple orgasms recirculate the energy, but I can do energy recirculation and create um, bliss states, which is good enough. Some guys that I've talked to who who watch my article are able to do that in sex. So you might be able to, I can't, but I don't actually care about that all that much. Um, maybe if I found a girl who was hardcore into Tantra, I might try to master the energy recirculating orgasms during sex as opposed to just in masturbation. But for right now, I don't care because I'm, I'm able to recirculate that energy into the heart chakra without an orgasm. And that is plenty good for me. Um, so I probably won't work on improving that too much. Depending on your progress, uh, just to wrap this up, this might be a lot to take in at once. Okay, there's, there's a lot of information in here, which is why I suggest you check out the article. And maybe you're not sure if it's for you, but all I can do is ask, all I can ask is this, experiment with, on, with it on your own. Go through your own reference point and see if ejaculation is draining to your energy. You know, if you don't believe me, jerk off three times and go to the gym and try and beat your best, your best bench press, right? Let's say you can do your one rep max is 200 pounds. Go to the gym and try and, and do that, right? I bet you won't even be able to get 170 off the bar. And that's a good way to see how much energy you've actually lost is your personal best in the gym, right? And if you, if you can only do 170, you know, you, you've lost 15% of your energy from, from those ejaculations. So that's an important thing to understand. And, you know, just test it out. And, you know, if you told me at 20 that non-ejaculating was the key to high energy and feeling great, number one, I wouldn't have believed you. And number two, I would have been like, it's not worth it. But... It really is. I'm telling you that when you don't transmit your energy, you risk um, losing your energy. You risk, risk killing your mood. You risk getting STDs because you're, you're not able to control your sex drive and not able to wear condoms consistently. You risk getting girls pregnant. My, one of my boys out here who's 20 years old um, you know, would, would just super high sex drive just coming and every single girl... And this is Asia where girls don't take birth control pills. I mean, craziness, STD rates are super high because he couldn't control it. And he spent a lot of time chasing girls that he ended up having to go home because he wasn't focusing enough on his business. I don't blame him. It's, it's very hard to do at 20. But I'm telling you, there are so many things that you'll lose. You'll lose your physique because you're not able to go hard enough in the gym. You can lose your business, you know, because you're not putting in, you're not doing the 10x effort that it takes to get that thing off the ground. Um, you know, really, every, it, it can affect every area of your life. Whereas you take it to the other extreme by transmuting that energy, it affects every single area of your life in a positive way. I don't, you don't have to believe me right now, but I highly recommend you give it a try. And I guarantee you that it will be worth it transmuting your energy. If you're able to master it this year, it will be probably the best thing that you can do for yourself this year. And, you know, now at, at 35 for me, it's 100% worth it. If you're an older guy, if you're over 30, or especially over 40, I mean, it's it, it's not even an option. you got to be doing it, dude. Like, you can't. Every ejaculation you feel at this point in the game, it's 100% worth it. And, you know, ejaculation management and sexually transmuting that energy is an absolutely crucial part, an essential part of your personal development. And it's one of the most important things that you can do for yourself. It's right up there with exercising 
and eating eating well, if not more important. That that's that's how high I would rank it. Um, but you don't have to believe me. All I ask is that you allow for the possibility. Give it a try. Check out the article. Follow the game plan, and let me know how it's going for you. Either on the comments on my website or in the YouTube comments. And I hope this was useful to you. As always, check out part one if you haven't watched it. And I wish you all the best in your personal development journey.